Hello and welcome. This video series is dedicated to ASC Test A4, Steering and Suspension. It's my goal to provide all the information you'll need not only to pass this test, but to apply this information when working on cars. I also aim to provide the most concise and comprehensive platform for this information. So without any further ado, let's talk tires, guys. First off, tires serve three major functions to support the vehicle weight, also to absorb minor road shocks. The tire sidewalls are our first springs of the vehicle. And finally, tires transmit vehicle forces. Since the tires are the only component touching the ground, we cannot expect a vehicle to sit, stop, steer, or accelerate without them. The tire placard is a sticker located at the lower B pillar. The original tire size is located here, as well as recommended tire inflation and total vehicle load capacity. The tire size designation circled in blue is an ISO approved sizing method, International Standards Organization. This is a standard for sizing passenger rated vehicles. So let's take a closer look. Reading these values from left to right, we start off with our vehicle designation. P stands for passenger rated tires, and you might see LT, which stands for light truck tires. P metric tires almost always come standard on all vehicles, including trucks. This ensures better ride quality. But I'll cover the pros and cons of LT tires in the next video. The second value is one half of our aspect ratio. This is the tire's cross-sectional width. It's measured in millimeters, and there are 25.4 millimeters in one inch. We're gonna to need to know that here in a minute. The third value is the second half of our aspect ratio. This will help us determine what the sidewall height is. And this is a percentage of the cross-sectional width. The R stands for radial ply. Radial ply cords run perpendicular to the tire beads versus bias ply tires, having a diagonal design. Radial tires reduce tread squirm, tread deformation, and rolling resistance, improving fuel economy up to 20%. That makes them the gold standard tire construction. You'd be hard pressed to find a bias ply tire in a passenger car at this point. The 17 represents our rim diameter, and that's measured in inches. This is why we need to convert our aspect ratio from millimeters into inches so we can do the math and figure out what our total tire diameter is. And finally, we're left with the service description. This includes the tire's load index value as well as the speed rating. But we're going to cover this in the next video, so let's get back to tire diameter. All right, so again, the 245 represents the tire's cross-sectional width, how wide the tire is. It's 245 millimeters wide, and if we wanted to know how wide the tire was in inches, we take that 245 and we divide it by 25.4, and we get our value in inches. This tire is 245 millimeters wide. It is also 9.65 inches wide. Next, we have the second half of our aspect ratio. This is our sidewall height. The 50 is a percentage of our width, so we use these two values to figure it out. I'm going to show you three ways on how to do this. All right, guys, the first way we can do this, we multiply the aspect ratio values together and we get a number. In this case, we get 12,250. Then we have to divide that by 100 because the 50 is a percentage. 50%, which is 50 out of 100, we get 122.5 millimeters. That's how tall this sidewall is. To convert it to inches, we divide it by 25.4. Now we know our sidewall is 4.8228 inches tall. The second way is a little quicker. You take that second value and you move a decimal place two spots over, and then we can skip that second step. We're gonna get the same value here. And this will work with any tire, any aspect ratio. And then again, we have to divide it by 25.4. We get our 4.8228 inch sidewall height. Third way, we can multiply the values together. We get our 12,250 and then divide it by 2540. We get the same number. 
that 2540 comes from right here. If we have to divide it by 100 and then divide it by 2540 later, if we multiply those two values together, we just do it in one step, we can do it that way too. So the 17 represents the rim diameter, and that's already in inches. And we've done the math for the sidewall height, and so we know what that value is in inches. Looking at this tire though, in order to get the total tire diameter, we're gonna have to multiply that sidewall by two because we have one on the top and one on the bottom. All right, here we go. We have a 4.8228 inch sidewall, multiply that by two, and we get 9.456 inches. Now we add our 17 inch rim diameter to that, and we get a total tire diameter of 26.456 inches. Now here's the reason why I brought up that 2540. If you cut that number in half, you get 1270. Cutting that in half, doing this math is the same as adding two sidewalls at the same time. So this is kind of the quickest way I've found to find, to calculate the tire diameter. You multiply the aspect ratio values together. Once you get that number, you divide it by 1270 and it'll give you the exact same number, 9.456. And this will work on any size tire. And then again, we add our 17 inch rim and we have a total tire diameter of 26.456 inches. All right, now this won't be on your test, but it might help you in the shop. You know, it's not uncommon for SUVs and trucks to get lifted and have big tires put on. And this can cause many things to happen, some of which can be a little counterintuitive. The first thing that comes to my mind is speeding tickets. Larger tires throw off your speedometer, and that's because a larger tire travels a farther distance per revolution than a smaller one does. And the way the vehicle estimates its speed is based off of wheel speed and also based off of the manufacturer's recommended tire size. The vehicle doesn't know that you changed tires out or the customer did. What that will turn into is a speedometer displaying a slower than actual miles per hour. This is pretty common. And the faster the vehicles travel, the farther off that speedometer will be. Because that's off, it's also gonna throw off your odometer. Maybe this is the silver lining in the cloud because this will underestimate the actual vehicle mileage. So it's gonna say that you're, you have less miles on your car than you actually do. But because of this, it's gonna mess with your fuel economy too if you're measuring that. Um, it will register lower than normal estimated miles per gallon, whether that's happening or not. A few other things, a customer might complain about power loss. You put a larger diameter tire on a car or a truck, you're actually dropping torque. You're losing torque to a larger diameter tire. It could mess with transmission shift timing, erroneous ABS or just hypersensitive ABS, traction control, vehicle stability control operation, things like that. Let me give you an example. All right, check this out. 2012 Tacoma, two TRFE, that's a four cylinder, auto trans two wheel drive. Factory tire size P245, 7516, 30.47 inches. New tire size, 285, 75, 18, 34.83 inches. Difference, 4.36 inches. Let's see what happens. The first thing I do, I want to find out the engine speed based upon the vehicle speed and the original vehicle equipment. The way I do that is RPM is equal to miles per hour multiplied by transmission gearing multiplied by final drive gearing multiplied by 336 and then you divide that by the tire diameter in inches. I know all those values but I don't know my RPM. The reason 336 is there is because we're talking about revolutions per minute, miles per hour. So there has to be a 60 somewhere or a one divided by 60. We're talking about tire diameter in inches and miles per hour, miles and in inches. There's 63,360 inches in a mile. And then we really don't care about the diameter as much as we care about the circumference of the tire. How far of a distance does it travel per revolution? And that's pi D. So pi has to be there. You move those values around and you get 336. So anyway, I'm gonna pick 70 miles an hour. Let's say this 
Tacoma is driving 70 miles an hour with factory tires on it. Fifth gear is 0.805 to 1. The rear diff is 3.307 to 1. Then we have our 336. We divide it by the factory tire size and we get 2,055 RPM. Now I can plug that in with a new tire size because my, my unknown value next is miles per hour. So I kind of flip these things around on their head a little bit and basically you take the value you don't know and you put it on the left. So miles per hour is equivalent to RPM multiplied by tire diameter and that's divided by your gearing and then the 336. So now that I have an RPM value, I can plug it in with the new tire size and I have these values down at the bottom, 80. That tire size at 70 miles an hour, when the speedometer is reading 70, the vehicle is actually going 80 miles an hour. All right, guys, that completes chapter one on tires. We'll see you back next time. We're going to do a video on speed rating, load rating, tire pressure, run flat tires, directional tires. And uh, do me a favor, hit the notification bell, like, comment, subscribe. I'm new at this with the PowerPoint and you know, my audio is terrible. I'm trying to work on that. So let me know how I'm doing. And in the meantime, uh, stay smart, stay sharp. Don't break anything and don't drop a car in your head. All right, peace guys.